I'm Jamie Uretsky, curator of New Bedford Art Museum Artworks. And I'm speaking with Jenea Kizzy for a very special Fiber Optic Fridays edition of Creative Convos. Okay, so welcome to Fiber Optic Fridays. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for being <laughs> one of our artists. Um, yeah, I'm so honored. So, yeah. Jenea Kizzy, everybody, look at this angel. <laughs> so, I do have questions about your work, but how, how are you doing in the world? I'm, I'm doing uh, all right. I'm doing a lot with a lot, uh, I guess. Um, processing, um, working, and uh, on occasion creating, um, and on occasion screaming. They, they all happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's like part screaming is part of the art practice is now part of the work practice. Everything is just, yeah. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk first about your piece that we're going to premiere. So I saw another video of yours uh, that was that's similar, like a similar ritual to what's going on in um, Bellina. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you talk about that this the the ritual first before we get into the Moby Dick connection. Yeah, um, so in actually around the same time that I did Baylina, so uh, in 2017, I did a performance video um, called Linnea Negra, and um, dealing with sort of um, marking darkness. <laughs> Um, yeah, parents, et cetera. And, um, and the words came first. I'm a, I'm a writer by profession. Well, I'm a writer by art, artistic leaning. That's, that's the one I started with first, I guess. Um, you know, right after crayons and the words came first, but then the, the ritual came immediately after. Um, I was thinking about uh, wetness, I was thinking about skin, I was thinking about um, ink and pigment and marking. Um, and in, in that particular ritual, it, it is all about first wetting down the paper and then um, having the, the ink bleed through, mm -hmm. um, which comes up a little bit in Baylina as well. Um, but there's really something about um, having having choreographed movement along with um layered words and also with narrative too um that that is how both how i process and how i express things through specifically through narrative or through all of those things <laughs> like all those things great yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but really um I, I find myself gravitating toward ritual all the time. Um, it's, um, I think there's a lot of chaos in my narrative and, and ritual gives it sort of a, a heartbeat, a baseline. Like, like a liturgical practice almost, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, those kind of things create a feeling of safety for whatever reason, um, even if like, <laughs> For example, like rituals in the church, like even if the church is in a safe place mm -hmm. for someone, um, the practices, you know, are great. And when I first saw, when I first saw Belina, I was like, this is some witchy stuff. Like, what am I looking at right now? Um, do you want to talk about witchy stuff? Um, I, I can digress about witchy stuff all the time. Um, I was, I was just listening to, and I won't plug all the podcasts cause there's too many now, but, uh, I was just listening to horror queers on bloody disgusting. Um, they just did, uh, uh, the, the craft, mm, they just cool. watched the craft. And so they were talking about the craft and, um, and then I realized like how, how deep and how, how long ago my obsession with with rituals um having to do with sort of like a, a pagan earthiness have have been like a part of me mm -hmm. um 
I, I think all, all human ritual has a lot of pagan earthiness to it. Um, but I, yeah, there's, there's something very appealing about drawing on in this New England context, in this, um, you know, Moby Dick context on, um, on water, fire, earth, all of those things. And, and also, you know, the, the traditional witchiness that we think of as witchiness, um, which of course we associate with femininity and with sort of the, the primal things that um, I guess Melville was starting to talk about, but in a very forceful, aggressive, masculine way. Yeah, and let's just Let's just Tell lean. Me. Let's just <laughs> lean in. Let's just lean in. I uh, uh, Moby Dick, Melville. Um, <laughs> where you start? Can we just start with the, the about as honestly? I shouldn't say this out loud, but as far as I got in the actual book before I yep. just gave up and was like Cliff's notes. Like, why do I have to read this entire book? I started this process five and a half years ago when I started to work in New Bedford and I landed on Cliff's Notes. But so like scene one, like right after Call Me Ishmael, dude, the, he starts snuggling with another dude. And I was like, this is going to get good. And then it <laughs> didn't. It never did. <laughs> so, it did in Melville's real life, if that makes you feel better. That's, that's how I feel. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I feel a little better. Um, can we... Like, where do you want to start with this book? Oh, man. Well, when you asked me how I was before, I really should have said that I, I feel very much like Ishmael at the beginning of Moby Dick. I feel like I want to just unceremonially, unceremoniously start knocking people's hats off on mm -hmm. the street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, oh, where do I start? Um, I read Moby Dick in 2001. Um, right around 9-11, weirdly. Um, I, it definitely got under my skin, even though there was no place for me in that book. There, there, there is no um, voice there that, that resonated with me, um, and, and quite a few that pushed me away. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and yet images from it sort of haunted me afterwards. Um, and, the, and the one that I found myself lingering most on was in the uh, chapter Squid, where they, they deal with a mystery that they're scared of more than Ahab and the white whale. They just see this really fricking giant squid sort of bubble up out of the water and, and disappear. And they're like, uh-oh, um, because giant squid you know, you don't, you don't chase them. They, they can take down a ship and they can take down a whale. Um, and that, that sort of moment of, of mystery and horror um, as, as a lover of horror, as, as a lover of um, the sea, um, as a lover of mystery, just sort of stayed with me forever. Um, <laughs> the structure of it, of this piece, would you call it like a performance for camera situation? Would you call it a video? Thoughts on that? Yes. Um, I call, here we go. Um, I call all of my, <laughs> I call all of my work books. Um, mm -hmm. Even, even the, the digital works, um, even the videos. There's, there's always um, something about marking something. There's always um, an element of narrative of um, beginning, middle, and end. Um, there's always an element of binding. Um, again, back to all of these rituals. So um, it, is, it is very much a book to me, um, even though it's a video of a book. Um, and I, I do think of it as as specifically digital art because it's not simply a video. There's um, like a, a, it's not simply a video of a performance. There are, there are layers of sound in it. There are um, alterations of time within it. 
um, that make it uh, a little bit more than than just a recreation of a present moment. When you refer to your works as books, does that mean that there are like chapters within within a certain piece? What does that look like? Absolutely. Uh, well, with with Baylina, I would say that there are, there are chapters and there are footnotes. Um, with the sounds being footnotes, um, I I am also by profession a librarian, and it is very hard for me to talk about anything without referring to six other things in the same sentence. <laughs> and uh, what I love about the digital medium and the vid and the video medium is the fact that you can connect those things. Mm -hmm. um, you can you can mention them. Um, and let people do their own research um, after that. And then in, in terms of chapters in Baylina, I would say that there's, there's simply, um, almost in, in conversation with Moby Dick, there's, there's a lot of um, digression, but I would say my, digression, my digressions are a little more unified, mm -hmm. but I, <laughs> we don't have to talk about that, but the um, but there's there's digressions that are speaking to each other. It seems like we're we're going into the you know the world of um, aquatic animals, wood eating animals, and just staying there. But it's really also part of this conversation about um, what what is our past with the sea? How did we change the sea? How did the sea change us? Um, and, and specifically, how did the sea change me as a, as a black person? It opens with uh, the, the, narr the narrative voice being digging through uh, grandmother's clothes or, someone, or someone's stuff. Um, do you, is it like part, like do you always start or is there always some sort of a personal connection to everything that you make? Um, tell me about that. I, for, for a really long time, I tried really hard to completely encode my entire experience um, whenever I wrote anything. So um, I would always, like it was never, it wouldn't be me going through my grandmother's stuff. It would be like the, the dragon princess is um, going through the dragon horde. And um, I really wanted to hide, I think. And now, I, I find myself not, again, not doing a sort of razor sharp documentation of, of my own experience, but um, trying to tell the truth beyond the on paper experience of the truth. Hmm. Um, so it is, Baylina is intensely personal um, and has a lot of my own experiences within it but is also very, very fictional in the way that it is trying to get at a truth that is beyond what one would just read or hear from the words or see from the video. Something that I'm curious about, because, you know, listening to the video, you're talking about the different sounds, the different layers of sound. There's also uh, different levels, like, of, of sound. Um, how, how is the... How, how does your sort of background as a writer and a poet sort of influence editing choices? Um. Well, again, um, I was talking about footnotes. Uh, mm -hmm. it, feels like, it feels like footnotes. It feels like, um, but it also feels like my, um, my experience in choreography and in, um, in music are also starting to come, come in. Um, I, I want the feeling because there are levels because I want the feeling of movement within within the piece in a um, auditory and and visual way. Is there any other imagery that we should be talking about that people should keep their eyes out for? Um, I tried really hard to stay away from the lighthouse um, imagery, but I, I still like wound up on shanties. It's just it is what it is. Um, they oh i in in the the video there's actually a different shanty than the one that is playing 
Um, and there's a line in that shanty at the end of the shanty because they talk about like all the things that they do to whale. And then at the, the end of that shanty, uh, the last line is God damn and bugger whaling. Yeah, oh. <laughs> very important. So, so um, song and backward song, very important. Um, there is an undercurrent of, of love, I would say. Um, I, I'm very much about horror that comes from a place of love because there's a lot of, I'm not going to name names because I, I'm not going to name names, but there's um, a lot of people who um, very much love, especially when talking about the sea, um, talking about a lot of horror that comes from hate and not from love. <laughs> and um, I, yes, I'm, I, I think love is just as um, horrific and awe-inspiring as the things that we fear. And in fact, it is one of the main things we fear. Um, and then, and then also just my, my experience as a black person, um, as a black person in a moment three years ago and as a black person in a moment now, um, just thinking about our own heritage in a way that isn't the traditional linear archival historical um, way, uh, things that are in our, in our minds, in our hearts, in our blood, in our memories, in the water, in the land. Um, we just, just because a big part of our history is this crime that was committed and then covered up, it doesn't mean that we don't have a history and that we don't know that history and that we can't access it immediately, even though it was taken from us. Um, and that's, and that with like a hefty dose of horror and mourning was what I was trying to tell myself in Baylina really um, was, was to find that um, both within the sadness and beyond the sadness. Before viewers go and watch your video, do you have any post video ritual suggestions that they should do? Like, should they immediately go and drink a glass of water and listen to Slayer? Should they, um, yeah, any thoughts, suggestions? I, um, I, I definitely went outside and walked a circle around my house um, after I had finished it. Um, ideally, I would say, um, I would run out of your house, find the most brackish water you can find, um, find the siltiest beach you can find, I guess, put on a mask, um, and, um, stick your arms straight down into the silt as far as the elbows or the shoulders if you can manage it. And then um, think about all of the layers of um, detritus and people and garbage and insects and animals from here to here. That's my ritual. I think that I think that I'm gonna go do it, and then I'm just gonna stick my face in there. <laughs> right, that's the, yeah. the face plant is optional, but I I would say very good. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's it's talking talking to you is like listening to uh t like a like a um, brutal but beautiful story always. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna. So, will Wait, you? Which way do I go? Which way do I go? That way. You did no. The first time. This way. No, I'm the. Yes. No, go the other way. Now we're pointing the same way. <laughs> okay. So, will, so will you introduce your video? Uh, yes. <laughs> um. And this is Baylina by Janae Kizzy by me. Yay! Thank you, Janaya.
Sunday, August 16th. About 8 a.m. discovered something adrift about 10 mile off. It being calm, lowered down a boat to see what it was. Found it to be the hull of a vessel bottom up, apparently about 300 tons. She had no copper on her bottom and no name. Caught some dolphin and returned on board half past 12. Latitude unrecorded, longitude unrecorded. Bailina by Janae Kizzy. There was a note in the bottom of the sea chest in my grandmother's attic. One word, Bailina. The iron gall ink had bitten and rusted the paper. It looked drowned and burned at once. When I tried to pick up the slip of paper, it ripped along the rusty curvature of the word until the note was just ferrous rust. Then I noticed the wormy holes beyond it, the tiny holes in the wood. I had given up on having a history, but I would follow Baylina, bloodily stitched into the wood. Baylina from the Latin, Baylina, mouth of the whale, Belina, whale genus, now mostly obsolete. Belina, whaler. Cutting through the water. Reel it out. The average whaling journey was a year or more. They gutted and cut the creatures on deck, boiled and massaged their insides. I remember her skin and her smell. I realized when I was very small that her smell was my smell. I caught it on the woolly pillows. The couch was covered in plastic. I never came to the attic. I never realized that it was there. I was just now frightened by my own reflection in the window. Fog was making a reflection in the glass. There are strands of her hair on the wood. She used to clean places. I found her uniform, but I can't imagine that. This place was never quite clean, just still. Still little figurines of animals grew pelts of her skin. If I asked her where we came from, she would say, out back, or where the cemetery is. That's where we come from. The ship Baylina was condemned as a slaver. More books. It's coy at first. Then doors lead to more doors, more facts. The wake of Baleen are resonating in suggestions. Cross-references bend back on one another. Footnotes trip into older books, different analyses, deeper depths. They're clinging to the rafters, thick, darkly textured bodies in the slow crawl. Deeper into the darkness that is their home. It's warm in there. I searched again, but only found more doors. Facts don't tell stories or even suggest meaning. On the ceiling, they turn blindly until they find sustenance. 
Footnotes lead to books, and then into lies, obscurity, and I'll give in to knowing. It sank. Sometime after it was condemned, or before. Sometime after it became another ship, or before. It traveled to Cape Horn, or remained in New Bedford. There are no registers indicating the weight of the ship upon its return. No one said that it sank. They only found her body. They only brought up the dead eyes and the black bell with her name. Her body. The books were unwritten or sunk. There's nowhere else to go. But the ceiling. My eyes won't focus. Lines become furry waves. The outside is fog inside me. There may be more pages filled in red. Their type is indelible, unerasable, unobservable, salt and blood. It's welling up in the place where the two halves of the attic meet. The first drop of water touched my forehead and for a moment I saw their faces, see but obliquely I. She had no copper, no name. She had no copper, no name, no copper, no name. Up the hill your granddaddy went. This is Mama's story, like a song she would sing. Granddaddy in his cap walked beside the old professor, and up the hill they went, said the old to the young man, Were you out upon the water? Yes, sir, said the young. What did you catch? Crab, sir, and quahog. What did you see when you go out on the water? In the morning, I see the mist, and from it I see the hull of a great ship rising, and its cargo follows. And the man grabbed his heart as if stricken. Your daddy carried him home. The boring worm or ship worm was not born of the sailing world, but it thrived in it. Millennia it lived without the wood, and suddenly in the 18th century it became so tied to the wood it was named for it, ship worm. 
copper, expensive, essential, and ultimately useless, was placed on the bottoms of ships to keep shipworms from destroying hulls during whaling voyages that proceed over the course of years. I am following uneven corridors through the solid matter of recorded history. Holes describe the whole. There is nothing to find of the Balina because it has been ridden with holes. It is now only a hole. I can breathe underwater. In the Wreck Valley. I was born in the water upside down. I was born with a worm in my mouth. I was born into wreck and ruin. Doors are made of wood. I will find sustenance. The earth will not keep us, but the water might. Who says there are no thunderstorms in April? Sunday, August 16th. About 8 a.m. discovered something adrift about 10 mile off. It being calm, lowered down a boat to see what it was. Found it to be the hull of a vessel bottom up, apparently about 300 tons. She had no copper on her bottom and no name. Caught some dolphin and returned on board half past 12. Latitude unrecorded, longitude unrecorded. She greeted me with scorn and said she never would marry a man unless he could play on the horn. Or Play.